Ron Smith, uh, also known as Octo Eyes, and that is something that I actually looked up. I googled Octo Eyes, oh. and it's a very interesting concept, actually. Uh, could you tell us just a little bit about why you've chosen that name? Yeah, I mean, so my given name, Ron Smith, is pretty common. And uh, when I started showing my work, I, I want to stand out in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so that name for me, uh, I've always had an affinity to the octopus. Mm -hmm. And when I became a scuba diver, I actually could come face to face or eye to eye with an mm -hmm. octopus. Mm -hmm. And they look really weird. They look <laughs> like little alien creatures mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. earth. Mm -hmm. So. For me, that was like um, a way to look at the world in it from a different perspective. Like, if I was an alien, maybe, how would I see the way things are? Mm -hmm. um, so it just gives me a, a point of view that is a little bit different and that I identify with mm -hmm. uh, when I'm working on my projects. Great. Thank you. The name of the show is Mixogastria. Tell us a little bit about that name, please. Okay, so Mixogastria is a fancy name for slime mold. <laughs> These are uh, organisms that I think mostly are in the forest, in the ground, um, kind of like uh, mycelium and mushrooms and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're really strange creatures because they can get really large. They can get like three feet across and it's one single cell. Oh. And they're oh. slimy and creepy, and mostly oh. they like to hide. Uh -huh. Except when they're about to reproduce, they seek light, they seek uh, air, and they send up these little strange things that are the inspiration for this sculpture. So it's, they're uh, fruiting bodies, and they're really, really tiny. Kind of so, like a mushroom? Exactly like mushrooms. Uh -huh. Exactly. But really small. Yeah, so yeah. like one millimeter oh, would okay. be a typical size uh -huh. of these uh -huh. fruiting bodies that uh -huh. pop up. Uh -huh. So when I first saw them, uh, I thought, whoa, that's really cool. And then immediately was like, oh, I want to make something like that. So. Okay, so it's translated. You've got these little fruiting bodies, and now we're, it's translated into what we're standing by here. Yeah. Uh, when I first came in, I really didn't understand until I started moving around these things and they started talking to me. Speak a little about that and, and how did you go from a mold, a slime mold, into something that is responding to my body movement and also uh, the, the lighting? Yeah, um, there's a few things going on. So there's, for me in, in my work, scale. Um, and interactivity are two really big components. Um, I thought, wow, how fun to essentially, we're, we're shrunk down to a super tiny size now and just use your imagination. Uh, imagine being that small and walking around. This stuff is all around us. Uh -huh. But if we were a different size, suddenly we would feel really strange, like where, what is this alien world that we're in? Mm -hmm. So I wanna kinda recreate that feeling. Oh, um, yeah. And like the sounds, I don't know if they make sounds, but I, they might, we uh -huh. don't know. Uh -huh. But I, sure. I like to play with that. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I think it, it pulls people in and, and it is unexpected, so I like I like that element of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the light, of course, I really have enjoyed doing light art mm -hmm. uh, the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, I started, my art when I started out, I was doing mostly ceramics and mm -hmm. smaller scale things. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Burning Man mm -hmm. and that blew my mind. It was like huge sculptures that you climb all over and mm -hmm. lights and fire and it really tripped something in my brain mm -hmm. and kind of gave me permission to start experimenting with larger scale things with light with fire and interactivity of the pieces that I've made was initially it was just kind of an afterthought but then I saw how people would react to it and like the joy 
the, uh -huh. people smile, they, they light up, you can uh -huh. just see it, uh -huh. and it was like, okay, this is cool, this is what I want to do, mm -hmm. I want to trigger that kind of response in a person mm -hmm. when they see the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. So, it's sounding to me that the interactive quality of your work is really important uh, to you. Now, uh, so someone comes in here and um, it's quiet at first, and then they start hearing these sounds. What are those sounds from? Did you just inadvertently do these sounds? Or you recorded something, uh, a squeaky door or what? There it, are um, a variety of different sources, and I, I had a lot of fun playing with it. Like, what, what kind of, I wanted it to be unusual, but there's a little bit of familiarity in there too. So there's like crickets, but backwards, um, which surprisingly sound pretty much the same forward and backwards. But, okay. Yeah. Um, there's like one, one of the sounds is like a bicycle chain clicking. Huh. Huh. Um, there's like a foghorn. Um, I have to listen to them now to remember what they are. Yeah. There's like 20 or so different sounds that I manipulated and sped up, slowed down, play forward or backwards, and oh just like gave them a little bit of vocabulary to talk. So, what do you want your viewers uh, to take away from this show, from this exhibit? What do you want them to um, take away I think from? people would be surprised to know that structures like this exist. And mm -hmm. I mean, they're all around us mm -hmm. if you look hard enough. Mm -hmm. And so uh, on one level, I want people to become more aware of uh, our environment because mm -hmm. the more we know about it and appreciate it, I think the more we will take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of wonderful things to discover. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that curiosity is really important mm -hmm. that people always have that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's great. Uh, especially the, obviously the enjoyment of the environment. And when you blow it up to, to this size, then people start to take notice. Yeah. I also asked you how you made these, and can you talk just a little bit about the, the, you know, the technology? Because a lot of your pieces that I've looked at on your website, there's a lot of technology involved there. Can you just a little bit sure. divulge what's going on here? Yeah, um, because you know, I had a career as a software developer, and um, so incorporating the technology in my work is really fun for me, just because I get to use all the parts of my brain um, so each of these uh, yeah. stalks, spores, whatever they're called, they, they have a little microprocessor in them. Um, there's 150 LEDs in um, the sphere, mm. and there's a little speaker. They have a sensor. There's a little, actually a little radar in there that is what is detecting uh. you walking around them. Uh -huh. And then some relatively simple programming to tie it all together wow. and... Um, get it going. Wow. So, I kind of thought there was a little bit of <laughs> technology behind what we're, what we're experiencing. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> My goodness. Oh. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Octoize. I love that. That's just great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here and bringing your work. And uh, I am going to come at night and look at uh, the lighting of, uh, won't be able to come in and hear them speak to me, but I'll be able to see them light up. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely worth coming by at night to see because they really light up the whole room. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Yeah.